Hey y'all, this is the legendary Sonny G, Sonny with a O, not a U. And this is your boy Sterling Moody. And we are F a Podcast. F a Podcast. And thank you for listening to us. So make sure you tune in to F a Podcast, a real N-word podcast where we talk about real N-word stuff. That's it. So make sure y'all tune in. F a Podcast. F a Podcast. All right. Hey, thank y'all for listening. This is F a Podcast. F a uh, Sterling, you got your own uh, what what effa is? What's what's effa for for you? I oh, mean, effa can mean you know uh, fun ass podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like it can mean uh, uh, you know a f- uh, fucking awesome podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's gonna be you know uh, everywhere, and I got some some bad chick list to it. It's gonna be fine ass podcast for her. You know what I'm saying? It, it can be anything. Multiple meanings. For real, man. It's for everybody. By the way, by, I didn't even introduce, so I am the legendary Sonny G. Sonny with an O, not a U. I'm not a stripper. Y'all are going to hear that a lot. Um, and then my co-host, my player partner, my brother from another mother and father, twice adopted, <laughs> Mr. Sterling Moody. What's up, y'all? What's up? Yeah, it's Sterling. Um, I used to go by the trap Buddha because you know I had them Shaolin shooters, you know what I'm saying? But um, nah, man, like I'm, I have stopped selling drugs and I am back, uh, living a good life. I have a real job now, so we're gonna do this right. Uh, the feds will not be raiding this podcast, so uh, everything's gonna go perfect. I, I got got good vibes. Now, now one one thing we have in common, we're both parents. Yes, you more you're newer than me. I'm I'm ten years in the game. Yeah. Um. My my whooping arm has has gotten like athletic as all heck. Nah. Um, you <laughs> my, you have to develop yours though. You you still have time to develop yours. How how old is uh your son now? Oh uh, man, he's one and a half. Like it's it's cool. You know it, it sucks because um you know like but uh, he's annoying. Oh god, he's so <laughs> annoying. You can't you know you can't let your, your uh, girl yeah. hear this right. Like you you gonna have to basically like skip past this part of the. You can't let her know the the. No, no, cause she think he annoying too. Like, like as a baby, he uh, like, so she's singing uh, if you're happy and you know it, clap hands. Uh-huh. So the first time he clap his hands, pop pop. You know what I'm saying? Second time, clap his hands, pop pop. Third time, he just slaps in the face, cause he was like, "Bitch, I told you I I clap twice. I told you I was happy already twice. Clap 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 smack smack. You know what I'm saying?" So he just going around just Rick James and bro, to, he has broken everyone's ha- glasses. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he slapped my girlfriend's glasses off. Yes, I forgot all about that. Yes. And like it was, and the crazy part is like the smile that he gives you because like he knows he's light skinned He's he's <laughs> one years old and he already knows he's light skinned Yeah. So like he slapped the fire out of her, but then he just gave her that like <laughs> my <Yeah>. bad. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like you know what. You gonna you gonna pay for that in seventeen years? But I'm afraid of who he's uh gonna grow up into because you know like I didn't have a dad so I, I I figured this shit out on my own you know what I'm saying and I think I did pretty horrible so you know <laughs> like uh, like at least I can tell him what hey son don't do this and don't do what they did so you got to figure out the rest of it because I can't I can't really tell you what to do um all I can tell you is don't smoke crack like that's that's the only advice I really can give you I, I feel like that makes you that's that puts you in the, the the league of fame for fathers already like I think that's pretty good father that's that's pretty good parenting that's right. you know because right. here's the thing okay so the the first topic I really wanted to to get into with us both being parents is we're also both parents who smoke weed yes and so did your so first off let me let me just give you a little upbringing on me my whole family with the exception of like maybe one aunt and one uncle smoked okay my aunt, and nobody ever hit it from like we didn't have to go into the next room or anything like that like everybody was in the living room. and it started with my grandma yeah my grandma was was the leader she would get off work she worked third shift she would get off and she would demand that somebody find her a joint okay and you know when i was a kid that was the my parents you know and aunts and uncles in, in their generation when i became a teenager it became the grandkids job it was like i know y'all little badasses is skipping school and smoking <laughs> so somebody go find me back back in uh it was uh it was endo yeah back yeah. When, when i was a teenager matter of fact no 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 what, what was the uh the chronic no 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 what's the uh because y'all didn't call it gas man we had we had some of the dumbest names they for had stuff like doja doja that's there what i go. was thinking of we had to go find her that doja yeah you know what i'm saying 
And, um, but yeah, so my grandma, like, and it's crazy because doctors, she had been a nurse her whole life. Okay. And in 1988, she had got diagnosed with lung cancer. And doctors had told her that she had to go on chemo. And she's seen chemo take out more people than the cancer did. Yeah, that's a scary thing, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, so she decided that she wasn't going to go on chemo. She was going to, uh, uh, you know, before the internet, people used to order out of catalogs and stuff. So she used to order out of these magazines that had herbs and supplements and stuff in them. Yeah. She ordered a whole bunch of those and she like smoked a whole bunch of weed. <laughs> my grandma was still Your Grandma whooping. invented woke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was, I mean, she was just in tune with, with natural yeah. remedies and stuff like that. And my grandma stayed whooping great grandkids up until 2015. So either doctors don't know what they're talking about or she was just really you know, so people can't tell me nothing about weed. Like she smoked up until her last day. So I, people would be like, well, weed does this and does yeah. that. I'm like, no. See, see, let me tell you about my family. So uh, my mom was super religious. So she didn't smoke. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But my, my aunt and uncle smoked. And so when I was younger, I always thought like, damn, you know, it always smelled like something back here. But I didn't know what weed was. Cause, you know, I was I grew up in hood suburbs. You know what I'm saying? That's where your mom, you know, she said like, yes, we in the hood. It is crackheads everywhere. But you not gonna know you in the hood, so you know we was you know sheltered. But I noticed, you know, man, I'm like, what is this smell? And every time I walk in the backyard, I might be putting shit away. And um, when I was about twelve, one day we were going to Atlanta from Augusta, and uh, we walked in the backyard and pulled some clothes off the uh, you know uh, laundry line, and um, get to Augusta, I put on some pants, look in my pocket, it's a bag of weed, and I'm like, I don't even smoke weed. <laughs> These, you know, so I'm thinking like, right. what the fuck going on? And then it was years later when I was already a pothead. When I was like, damn, I caught my aunt and she stashed that shit, scared. Like, you know, it was, it was, it was wild. It was in, like, you know how you go to like Zaxby's or something, they give you some forks, mm-hmm. and the forks come in a little plastic wrapper. Mm-hmm. It was stuffed, like just stuffed full of gas. And I mean, this is like in 2002. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm sitting up here like, damn, man. Like I don't. And then, uh, I think the first time I got high, I was like 13. I was at the skating rink. I uh, caught a contact. So I'm, you know, I'm in the skating rink. It's hard to piss on skates. I'm not gonna lie to you, but it's very uh, tough because you know the flow. You mean in. when you go to the bathroom, right? Yeah, you know what I'm I saying. Was like, sure, you wasn't like, like <laughs> on your floor, on your no, nah, like, nah, you know nah. I've been around four times. I think. <laughs> I'm just peeled the flow. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, nigga slipping. <laughs> no, but uh, no. Nah, so I was in there for a long time. And I'm with my partner, you know what I'm saying? We 13, and you real weird at 13, because you're like, hey, man, you want to go to the bathroom? Yeah. Y'all sit in the bathroom talking, you know what I'm saying? And we are high as shit, because somebody's okay, in the Okay, y'all are high. See, I was, I was like, I never needed to go to the bathroom with my homeboys, but then when you high, you do think, bro, like, you'd be like, I need some help. Bro, you, know? you know what I'm saying? Like, it just happened that I went to the bathroom, he went right after me, you know what I'm saying? And then there was some, you know, some older kids in the bathroom blowing it down and so we standing in the bathroom and you know you're not noticing but you're like man i'm getting contact and it don't take a lot when you you know you ain't never smoked so we immediately think oh fuck we dying so we go to the only adult that's that we think of who is probably like 16 and he's a kid that works at the skating rink and we walk up and we go hey man i'm not gonna lie to you but we are both going blind can you can you help us? Like everything's getting real foggy, real cloudy. We laughing, but we panicking. Like we are full blown panicking. And he's like, just skate it off. And we were like, you know what? That makes so much sense. We're gonna skate the blind away. So we, you know, we we Hold skated. On. You can't see, and you decide the remedy for not seeing is to go forward on wheels. Oh, bruh. Oh, bruh. That was that was gonna cure you not seeing. So regardless of what happened, when once you were going forward oh, on the wheels, that was that was, that was gonna cure the blindness. That was it. It was either that or you know stand the tech and then pretend like you're playing with the no quarters that you got. You know what I'm saying? That, like, that's what I did. Yeah, that was me at the skating rink. I like I went with twenty dollars just specifically to play games, mm-hmm. and then when that twenty dollars wore out, I just sat there pressing buttons, hoping that somebody would put in a quarter. Bruh, bruh, look, see me. I was the, hey, man, you won your first round. Do you mind if I if I play your second round? Because you're probably going to win your, your third round anyway. So if I lose, it's okay. Yeah. Can I play with you? Like, I'm, I'm hate, the type of person. I hated you as a – because really? I, was, I was like, you know, hold on. We're going to go back to that. Yeah. That's that's a good topic. We're going to go back to the arcade days. Bro, but, yeah. okay, so so back to, to parenting on weed. Okay. All right. What's 
an encounter you've had with a parent that just lets you know, like, ooh, like we are not the same kind of parent on like I've okay, so to give you an example of what I mean, right? I've gone over to a friend's house and smoked with them, but we've had to smoke in like the most uncomfortable room in the house. Like yes. we had to go to the attic and it's super hot in the attic or we yes. had to go to the basement, not even a man cave basement. Like it's like the washer, the dryer is hot. Uh, the, uh, grandma used to pickle <laughs> greens. They've been down there since 1986. Like it's not someplace conducive to having a good high and, and you know, they're hiding it from kids. Meanwhile, you come to my house and you know, like, me and my daughter are going over essay questions while I'm smoking. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, you've got a test to prepare for tomorrow. <sighs> Where's your math book? You know, so. Bruh, bruh, I'm not going to lie to you. But if I babysit anybody's child, mm-hmm. they might they might be a little high. Like, that's just how it is. Because I'm, I'm that type of parent. Like, I feel like, hey, man, like, it's worse shit out there in the world. Like, you'll probably get shot by the police. So this blunt ain't going to hurt shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way statistics work for, you know, like, like I'm black, you know what I'm saying? So like the way statistics work for black boys, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you get, okay. Police or a heart attack or, you know, you're going to get addicted to like crack and everybody I know that got addicted to crack didn't even smoke weed. They were like, no, nah, that's not my shit. So I figured like, let's get that you. That is crazy. Yeah. When you, when you run into somebody who like completely is like, Ooh, no yeah. weed. And then they go to like something completely Bruh. on the opposite side of the scale. I know a bunch of dudes that do cocaine and don't smoke weed. Like, and I was like, I was like, why? It's not even not doing it. It's when they like the look on their face when they reject it. You're like disgusted. It's like, Hey man, you want to hit this blunt? Ooh, no, mm-hmm. no, I'm cool. <sighs> like, like, but- like they out there picking their kids up from school, bumped up. You know what I'm right. saying? So they can give their kid like a good, happy day and get through the day. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know what I don't know. I don't know the thing. Like I, I've never, I've never done cocaine. It's not, it's not something I want to. I don't want to be up like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I like to be like, yeah, I can just, I can just chill. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanna, I wanna smoke a blunt. And as a parent, I feel like it makes me a better parent because I'm gonna be more relaxed. You know, I'm not gonna beat my my son like that. You know, because I'm going to be high enough to be like, okay, I see how the fuck he got there. Okay, well, let me make sure he don't get there again. Now, the second time, hey, son, you know, like, you're fucking up and I don't like you right now. I understand. No, no, no. I I, I get that because I feel like I am. My my daughter gets so many more chances with me when I'm high. You know what I'm saying? I, I you know, It's like, you know what? Let's calmly discuss what went wrong here. But, like, sober, I have to constantly remind myself like all right all right don't go off mm-hmm. don't go off don't go off you know what i i should probably be high for this <laughs> <laughs> bro i don't smoke the blunt to change a diaper before because i was like okay i know he got diarrhea and i'm gonna throw up on him let me ease my stomach with this blunt wait your whole so you Hey man, you know me. You know babies do have diarrhea. That's, that's they what do. happens. They do, and you know what's really fucked up? Throwing up on a baby. Not because they don't remember it. You know what? That it's 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 more messed up to do it on on a, a grown person because they know it's happening to them. A baby's not gonna remember that. A baby's not gonna be like, remember one year? Like yo yo like Sean's not gonna like come back in in eighteen years and be like, hey, remember that time? You know, like. <laughs> but that would be crazy if he did. You know, it would be crazy if kids like really did. No, parents. If parents went back and got revenge on kids for the stuff that they did. See, that's crazy. Like, I, I, I don't know what I would do if my son came back. Because right now, like, it's kind of fucked up. Because, like, I'm, you know, there are times when he just kind of pisses me off. You know, like, like as a parent, I sit down. I'm like, you know what, son? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm about to leave you in this room with this with this YouTube on. And I'm going to go outside and hit this black and mild before you make me, you know, kill myself. Because uh, I don't know what it is about kids, but they're like, hey, I know that we can be together at the same time and separate. But my son is like, hey, dad, you know, I want to lay under you. So, like, if I'm going to lay on the bed, mm-hmm. he will crawl under me and then be like, why did, Why didn't you lay on me? I'm like, a son, I kill you if I lay on you. Like, I'm a big dude. And you a small baby. And he's like. I think but that's under, what I wanted. I think you underestimate. I've I've seen your son. You're underestimating him. He's he is a solid little dude. Like, like he came out 
as as he came out premature, right? Yeah, he was one pound six ounces. He was like like the size of two thumbs. Bro, he was almost like a kilo of cocaine. That's you know, and and not even stepped on for real, right? So now though, like looking at him, you can you would never be able to tell that. And like you said, like he's going around slapping folks, and those feel like grown man slaps. Those don't Bruh. feel like preemie baby slaps. Bro, he spends all day clapping. If you happy and you know it. He's training like all day. He just claps. So I know when like kindergarten starts, you know, he's going to smack the fire some kid. Like I'm not, I don't know how I'm going to call off work, you know, until had like, to go to yeah. the principal's office for that. Yeah. yeah. You for know smacks. And then like part of me, I'm I'm not a great parent when it comes to that type of stuff. Cause you know, like I believe in uh, the best solution to bullying is beating the shit out of them, you know, before they can, you know, uh, hurt you. You know what I'm saying? So like, Hey son, you got to defend yourself. Like, if if clapping is what's going to, you know, do it, that's cool, but stop hitting me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, my girl was, was giving me a massage. And she's, you know, she's, she's you know, uh, doing the thing where they're, like, you know, kind of punching your back, making sure, you know, to get the knots out. He's on the bed. He sees it. He's like, oh, it's time to beat daddy. And he walks up and just starts hitting hitting me, around, like, in the face and kicking me and stuff. And I'm like, this not what what that is, you know what I'm saying? This is massage, son. Exactly you just assaulting me. That's exactly no. what that Mm-mm. is. And then the face, like you don't massage my face with fists <laughs> and feet, Bruh. I okay. That's, so hold on, hold on. So that's that's part of being a parent. Like so, when when my daughter was one year old, I I swore she had to been a ninja in a previous life, Bruh. because. Whenever she lay with me in the bed, like I always woke up with a foot just like in my face, yeah, and I with bruises. Like I would look in the mirror and it'd be like, "Why is my eyes closed shut?" Because I was getting kicked in the face mm-hmm. all night. Like kids are abusive. People don't realize that. Like people are like, "Oh, he's so cute." No, nah, that's man, not, kids, kids are abusive. Like kids, are, kids are rough. Like I just so hope he grows see, up kind of cool. Look on Bree's face when we said that. Mm-hmm. She, 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 she knows. See, kids are abusive. Man, you spend all of your you you dedicate your life to taking care of them just for like, you know, like okay, like action figures. I know mm-hmm. I, my mom has been busted in the head with so many of my action figures as a kid, and I'm so sorry for that. But on the other, you know, Bruh, nah, okay. I used to want to be a ninja, right? I mean, like for real. Like I thought it was an occupation. So like there was, was an application. Bruh, process I for thought it. you could just go to school for ninja and <laughs> you know you graduate ninja. You get a degree. You know associates in associates advanced in advanced ninja. ninja. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Masters in ninjutsu, you know what I'm saying? Side, you know, with your you concentra- your- <laughs> concentration <laughs> yeah. on on uh on, on sneaking on Yeah, and forbidden techniques. Right. <laughs> uh so I um I used to look up YouTube weapons like that you could just make around your house. And I would just stash weapons around the house. Like, I mean, like, I take wire hangers and file them down to, like, six-inch, you know, little, you know, spears sharp on both sides. And I just throw them. I practice. Like, my my wall was messed up because I, I was just throwing stuff in the sheetrock. And um, one day I forgot one, and my mom was sitting on the floor cleaning, and we're talking. And she, she leans over, and one stabs her in the leg, like, an inch deep. So I'm like, oh man, I just killed my mom. Did I poison that needle? Oh no, I forgot. I don't know poison yet. Like thirteen. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Like that because at that point, see, I'm, and that goes into the subject of of being trap nerds. Yeah. Because at that point, I was doing stuff like that too. Like, like not really. Okay, so yours was more of you were training to be a ninja. Mm-hmm. Mine was I kept having cousins who were going to prison. Oh. And all of their advice for high school matched their advice for prison. It was mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like, I'm going to high school next year. What do you recommend? It's like, what you're going to do is you're going to get you a pencil and you're going to sharpen it. Mm-hmm. You're going to like people are going to think you really want to take a test, but you don't. <laughs> what you really you, you keep that sharpened pencil with you at all times. And it was like, OK. And so I was learning like advanced protect your neck mm-hmm. from from my cousins because it was like preparing me for something i had no interest whatsoever like mm-hmm. i i all my life i've lived as if prison is not something i'm just n- gonna do i'm just not gonna do anything that's gonna you know nah. land me in prison like i will do misdemeanor after misdemeanor after misdemeanor <laughs> nah. <laughs> but i'm not going to prison i <laughs> nah, I always I thought I was going out, to prison. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I always see my uncles gave me a different story. They were like, "Hey, every man go to jail at, at some point," and I'm like, "Damn, okay." Well, I guess I'm going to prison. And then my dad went to prison, 
You know, so I was like, well, I'm probably going to go to prison. I think that's why I ended up, you know, escaping into being a nerd so hard because I was like, this is different than everybody else I knew. When I was, you know, uh, high school, I had a dude ask me to sell crack when I was like 14. And I was getting bullied at the time. The dudes that was bullying me had guns. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to win this situation. I used to be scared. And um, dude was like, hey, man, you know, if you get down with me, like, you know, I, I look after you. So I was like, all right, I'll think about it. So for like two months, everybody just left me alone. And I'm like, man, this is real great. Like, why is everybody leaving me alone? Then I found out the dude was like pushing weight. So, you know, like whatever he said was going. And he was like 17. And we in high school. And I'm like, dude. Like, but I also went to a high school where we had a dude named Trevor that was twenty three, so you know it depends. Um, it wasn't I, a great school. I, I had an, I had a, a full grown adult in my class. Yeah, yeah. When I was, in, but no. So crazy thing about that was, so I grew up and all of my cousins were like the biggest dope boys in in, in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. This is the nineties. This was like booming. You know what I'm saying? And they, but but. So I was always intelligent. I was always told I was intelligent and things of that nature. And mm-hmm. what it was was they used to go to this arcade and they would, you know, gamble away their their money, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, on, on games and stuff like that. And so I would go, and this is when, like, Tekken 3 and yeah. Mortal Kombat uh, uh, 4 and all those were out. And they would pay me to beat. They, like, they would beat, or sorry, they would bet on you know mm-hmm. fighting games and pay me to 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 beat their friends and stuff like that so i would like go into the arcade with a dollar and leave out with fifty dollars in quarters yeah yeah because what they do is they put the quarter on you know player one or whatever mm-hmm. and then whoever you know if you win you get the quarter if mm-hmm. you, and the next person plays your or, or pays for your round and so my cousins but they always used to tell me they used to be like hey yo i don't ever want to see you out here on the street like you're too smart for that like mm-hmm. you know you go to the library you read books you you, you know play video games i don't ever want to see you out here doing what i do yeah and so when it came time that somebody you know tried to put me on or whatever i was making money off of my cousins like with good grades and playing video games and stuff like that it was like i'm making you know, more money, like all the money that they were, you know, people were bragging about selling drugs. Mm-hmm. I was making not selling drugs because of my cousins were like, you know, we don't yeah. want you out on these streets. Cause it's expensive to be a nerd, man. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't like, I didn't sell drugs as a kid. I was an adult and I was broke. And so, you know, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't anything like major at first. Like the biggest thing that I did was I would go work to, you know, work with my uncle. Mm-hmm. He did construction. And so, I go work with him, um, you know, it would be stuff from like, you know, from when I was five, you know, hey, man, just basically being on the truck. And he just wanted me with him and he slapped me like, you know, five dollars at the end of the day. And then by the time I was 13, I was getting like, you know, 20 bucks a day. But I was doing more work, you know, like, hey, help me unload the truck. But when I turned 16, I graduated high school and I um I went to college and I wasn't mature enough to go to college yet. So I, when I got done, I, I went back and worked with my uncle. And um, working with him was how I was funding all my nerd projects. Cause like I, like um, if you went to Books a Million on Saturday, mm-hmm. they played Yu Gi Oh. So you would play Yu Gi Oh for like six hours straight, from like six a.m. to like noon, and you had to be good at it. You know what I'm saying? And like people don't tell you, but nerd games are very expensive. Like any, oh yeah, any type of card game, any type of collectible. You know when you're sitting there and they got like ten thousand cards. And you're like, okay, well, I can only use 40 in a deck. You and collectible know. card games are the biggest trap because they give you the basic deck for Boy. free. Yeah. And, but the cards you want are always going to be the premium deck that's cost, you know, this like yeah. half your rent. Or yeah, rent. it's like they got these things called one turn kill decks or zero turn kill decks, which in like most games where the second the person starts playing, they've won because it's like, okay, well, I know when I, when I play. These six next cards are stacked in my deck a certain way where you have like, okay, like what the average person might have like, okay, I got, you know, 30 cards. They're going to be all types of different stuff. Uh Or one turn kill deck might have like five versions of, you know, the same card. So it's really only six cards. So you got one out of six chance of doing the right thing. And the way the deck is designed is like. They, you know, when you pull a card, it gives it, it just keeps giving you more cards until you win. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like Game Genie for card games. Like yeah. that, that's that sounds like a cheat code yeah. for card games. Like that's 
everything does not have to have a cheat code. Mm-hmm. Life, everything in life, card games. There's no, there's no cheat code for spades. Like, there's no up, up, down, down, left, yeah. right, B, A, select, start for spades. Like in spades, if you cheat in spades, we know. Everybody knows, and you're probably gonna get your ass whooped. For real, for real. But I've, in in Yu Gi Oh or those card games, like it's different because the games are designed to be like that. It's like whoever spends the most money. You know, they get it. You know, EA is dealing with that right now with microtransactions. Like, it, you know, it's, it's gambling. Right. So, like, think about it. Back in the day, they got us hooked on gambling as kids. Like, they were like, okay, well, you know, you can give us $4 and we'll give you 11 Pokemon cards. But I'm not going to tell you what Pokemon cards you get. Then five years later, they went from 11 Pokemon cards to nine Pokemon cards for the same four bucks. And so you were like, okay, well, yeah, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend more money. You just keep spending money on it. Like being a being a nerd, especially a trap nerd, because, you know, like you most trap nerds come from, you know, the bottom. We're not like super, you know, rich. Our parents are giving us hundred dollar week allowances, you know, so you scraping up the money you can. You hustling up what you can to get your nerd stuff like, hey, I'll trade you two cards for, you know, that card. I give you this comic book for that comic book because, you know, you can't buy a new comic book. But, you know, your friend got a comic book and you got a comic book and y'all could trade. You know what I'm that was the only one of my friends who read comic books. Okay, that was the the like I was see I I was in the 90s. The 90s it was taboo to be a nerd. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, it was yeah, get, yeah. Get locked in lockers, swirlies, wedgies, all that stuff. But uh, speaking of being a trap nerd, though, I remember the 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 day somebody tried to put me on. They are like, hey, so you know I'm making all this money, you know, and I need some help. And if you help, I do this, and I do that. And remember, I'm. I'm getting paid by my cousins and everything. Mm-hmm. But I remember thinking to myself, the one reason I didn't do it is because I was always a science geek. Yeah. And I always thought to myself, if I cooked dope, I would I would get caught immediately because I would be the only person out there with like cinnamon dope and yeah. like cocoa dope and yeah. like strawberry quick dope and stuff. I was like, the police would <laughs> immediately be like, there's only one guy on the block with strawberry quick dope. Yeah. Get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, so I knew immediately the drug dealing was not for me because I was not going to be able to the resist Ovaltine the urge. Heroin. Yeah. You know, I was, I was going to have like Swiss Miss cocoa dope. Yeah. Right? And, and the, immediately get caught. Oh, man. But That's... hey, we we are uh, we are coming to the end of the show. Before we end the show, um, first off, we didn't say the name of the show. The name of the show, is, well, we did say the name of the show, but it's F a podcast. Yep, F a podcast. Uh, funny ass podcast slash F a podcast slash yep. F a, which is uh, I looked this up. I found this out accidentally. Like we already had the name F a podcast, but mm-hmm. F a E F F a um, is a West African word meaning blessing. That's what's up. So. You know, we've got the vulgar version of what F a podcast means. That's what's up. And then we've got the, uh, we can actually tell our grandmas to listen to this because it's a, it's a, a wholesome name, F a podcast. And then they're going to turn it on and be like, y'all talk about weed, that devil's lettuce. <laughs> what's the, what's the, what's the craziest term for weed you've ever heard? I used to like reefer. Reefer was cool because it's like a real 70s vibe. Reefer does sound cool. Uh-huh. Reefer sounds like something you find in the fridge. Go go back there and get me that uh yeah. that jar of reefer in the fridge. Yeah, and I hate the term pot. Like white people, you serve white people, they always say, Man, you got any pot? You got any pot? I'm like, I got weed. I don't <laughs> got pot. Like pot is different. Pot pot was grown by some in you know, some nerds in a lab in a basement dungeon. Pot, pot immediately makes it sound lame. Like, yeah. All the after school specials in the nineties used pot. Like you're on pot? It, it just can't do it, man. Oh, and and so before we go, um, audio dap. So if you if you um, donate, if you if you if you donate to the show um, or anything of that may, nature, we always give audio dap. And this week's audio dap goes to um, Tania for Lomo Graphics, a league of my own graphics. She did the Trap Nerd Entertainment logo um, that you're going to see on our Instagram. So if you go to Trap Nerd ENT um, on at Trap Nerd ENT on Instagram, um, if you need to, to um, book us, email us Trap Nerd ENT at Gmail. Sterling, what's your information? Oh, uh, yeah. If you need to book me, you can check me out on Instagram at Sterling Moody, S-T-E-R-L-I-N-G-M-O-O-D-Y. I'm always doing stuff on there. Uh, you can also uh, book me at Sterling S G F E dot com. Uh, I'm sorry, Sterling S G F E at gmail dot com. 
Yeah. Um, or Sterling Moody at Gmail dot com. You know, I'll always respond. I'm always looking for, you know, new inspiration on stuff. So you can talk to me about anything. And then I am Trap Nerd Sunny, Sunny with a O, not a U. I'm not a busty meteorologist. <laughs> uh, on all social media prep platforms, and then comedian Sunny G uh, at Yahoo dot com. And thank y'all for tuning in to the first show. Man, this this went smooth. Yeah, you, you talk cool. a lot. You you fill up a lot of air. This this yeah. is gonna work out. I like this. <laughs> all right. Well, hey. Until next time, y'all be cool. Like how y'all be cool. Peace. This is the legendary Sunny G, and thank you for tuning in to Ever Podcast. You can also go ahead and follow us at Trap Nerd ENT on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can also go to our Patreon if you enjoy what we do and make a donation. Patreon.com slash Trap Nerd ENT and be on the lookout for future events. Sign up for our email list at Trap Nerd ENT at gmail.com. Again, thank you for listening. Y'all be cool like how y'all be cool.